the welding, on earth and underground, in the sea depth, and in space. Everywhere, welding has found use and left its reliable quality mark. Today, everyone knows the advantages of weld seams. They are durable, strong, efficient, and applied with metal structures of any size, shape, and purpose. Sometimes it is even hard to imagine that 100 years ago, there was no electric welding at all. The history of welding is rich with many interesting pages. This film shows the very first one, and probably one of the brighter pages of history. It is the story of Nikolai Nikolaevich Benardos. At the roots of welding, it is the Ukrainian village of Mustavoya in Nikolaev region. 150 years ago, it was named Benardosovka, after the man who first settled down here, General Pantelimon Benardos. In the famous hermitage in Leningrad, there is a portrait of this valorous officer among those of other heroes of the 1812 war. As a boy, he fled to Russia from Greece, which then suffered from Turkish yoke. His son, Nikolai, left the village of Benardosovka when the boy grew old enough to join an artillery academy. And here, his grandson, also Nikolai, was born in 1842. Bernadotte the junior learned handicrafts here and was introduced to the wonderful world of technology and the local smithies and workshops where all machinery was driven to action by transmission belts run by a fast and noisy river. Later, he took a short course in medicine at Kiev University then studied in Moscow at Peter's Agricultural and Forestry Academy. And only as a student of an electrotechnical hobby group, Nikolai Bernardos understood that his calling was to invent. In 1869, Nikolai decided to quit formal education and left the academy for his mother's estate in a township of Lucha near Ivanovo Vesnicensk. The archives of the records of the Eurovets Provincial Assembly carry sufficient information about Nikolai Bernadas of that period. In the far out township, amid the forests of central Russia, the young Democrats spoke in favor of compulsory education for all and opened the school for village children at his own expense. A sort of an eye-opening school for local peasants was the Bernadas estate of Privolne, which had been turned into a workshop and laboratory. The driving desire to change everything for the better and perfect the world of things and processes was never leaving the inventor. We know at least more than 200 inventions and designs by Nikolai Bernadas ranging from faucets and storehouse locks to agricultural machinery and various devices. Transportation means machine tools, fortification structures, and combat engineering, military and lighting equipment. One of the big projects realized in Lucha Estate is the steamship that could go across sandbanks. The inventor himself took the ship along unnavigable rivers all the way to the Volga and then on through the Mariinsky Canal system to St. Petersburg. Of course, many of those inventions have long become outdated and compared to modern technologies may even seem simply naive and funny sometimes. But Nikolai Bernadas had one outstanding feature which is so much characteristic of all great inventors. It is the ability to foresee far into the future. 
He was one of the first who started to work out a design of a flying machine, heavier than the air. Even by present standards, his ideas that underlie many propeller designs seem fresh and full of novelty today. The electric gun, which had been a complete utopia at his time, today may serve as a prototype for a would-be system of smooth launch of rockets and electromagnetic fields. This ordinary looking album of sketches is a true insight into the future. Today the method, similar to Bernadotte's electric culture, allows to grow plants in space, controlling their growth by electromagnetic forces. And yet Nikolai Bernadotte had still another, the major goal in his life. When he was still a student at the Peters Academy, the beginning inventor went for the 1867 World Exhibit in Paris. Having seen the technological wonders of that time, Nicolas Bernardos understood that the rapid growth of industry would inevitably have to stumble over the inadequate technique of fastening metals. The future needs of industry could be satisfied neither by primitive hammer welding, which was unreliable and could handle only small parts, nor by riveting, which was labor-consuming and inefficient in cases of repair. The inventor based the solution of this problem entirely on the possibilities of electricity. Back in 1802, in a laboratory of St. Petersburg Medical and Surgery Academy, the Russian physicist Vasily Petrov experimented with a galvani bolt battery and discovered the electric arc. While replacing charcoal by different substances, Vasily Petrov found out that the arc does smelt metal. 70, layers, 70 years later, the electric arc was again used in the Yablochka of Kendall. Put on a gloss bulb, it was used to eliminate capital cities in many countries. During his visit to France in 1876, Nikolai Bernadotte witnessed a real triumph of the Russian light as the Yablochkov candle was called by surprised citizens of Paris. His Paris impressions and a personal meeting with Yablochkov seemed to give new impetus to the young inventor. Long before that, in Lucha, he tried to apply electric arc for heating the metals. An attempt to turn a heated part into one of the electrodes in the arc was crowned with success. Now the question was, can it replace the hammering entirely? But specialists were unanimous in saying, no, it was impossible to use arc for soldering or welding. The inventor decided to search for the right answer. And Nikolai Bernadotte went to St. Petersburg to Yablochka's factory, where the inventor of the arc lighting worked together with outstanding Russian experts in electric engineering, Alexander Ladigin, and Vladimir Chikov. The Russian Technical Society, Nikolai Bernadotte created several original projects in the field of electric engineering and later successfully implemented them both in Russia and abroad, in France, Germany, and Spain. He made a design for lighting leaf bridges, a project of providing inexpensive electricity to St. Petersburg and several projects of hydroelectric power stations, including the one on the Neva River. At the same time, he makes new steps toward his major goal. The inventor designed a special welding storage battery and discovered the elements for the welding circuit, 
Having selected a storage battery as a most preferable source of current at that time, the inventor used a weak current generator for recharging the battery and also completed the system with a loading regulator and a commutator. At the same time, he patented several successful models of regulators and commutators. Late in the 1870s, the basic design of the electric circuit and all components of welding were completed. The estate in Lucha turns into an electric welding workshop. Even though the first welding equipment looked like a forging anvil, the main thing was already done. The inventor succeeded to obtain a solid weld sink. Nikolai Bernagos and his friend, the Russian electrical engineer Buxenmeister, successfully welded boilers at the electrode workshop in Kineshma and the Kubaya manufactory in Ivano. During his experiments, the inventor found the first reliable type of welding bath protection and the way to obtain a quality weld. The welding was done by a long arc with a white torch on the so-called reverse polarity. This resulted in strong reducing reactions which prevented the oxidation of metals. Here's Paris again, the laboratory of the Russian electrical engineer Kabat. The Lanatura magazine wrote about those days the following. The electrical processing of metals. This research was begun in 1881. Mr. Bernardos was the first to apply this method in the Electrocyan Laboratory for autogenous welding of lead plates for storage batteries. In the list of major inventions and projects for 1881, Nikolai Bernardos made entry number 46, which read Electric Hephaestus, the Greek name of Vulcan. It was the first name of the electric welding. The method, which was named after the ancient god of blacksmiths, was destined to become a true conqueror of metals. The invention of electric welding was not only a scientific feat, but also a deed of life for Nikolai Bernadotte. In this building in the old Kinishma Bank, his estate in Bucha was sold for debts. In 1884, it was the price of many years of expensive experiments before the invention was made. The selling of the estate was a total bankruptcy for the Bernadas family, while the electrophysis still had to be legalized. Money, money and more money. He needed loads of it in order to get a patent in Tsarist Russia. And he still had to go through petitions, verdicts, and references by experts decisions and more petitions. Only in 1885, Nicolas Bernardos could finally get a patent for the electro in France. A little while later, he got a patent in Russia. In his formal description of the device, Nicolas Bernardos wrote the following. This method allows to unite separate metal parts to separate or cut metals to drill holes and make cavities, and also perform overlap welding. Now industry received an unheard of method of processing metals. The inventor actively advertised the new method, and in 1885, he managed to organize the Electrophysis Society in St. Petersburg. Unfortunately, this model of the world's first welding workshop, reconstructed from old sketches, cannot recreate the atmosphere of continued search that reigned in this works. Every new weld was a discovery in itself, something that had no precedent. Locomotive wheels and frames, pipes and boilers, welding equipment and parts of ship hulls, all this was made on repaired reliably and quickly here. The electric hephaestus was not only a workshop, but also a laboratory where the inventor realized his daring technical ideas. In 
An expert welder himself, Nikolai Bernardos soon introduced a welding technology not only for steel, but also for pig iron, copper, and bronze. While working on various types of welded joints, the inventor designed many original devices and electronic supports for manual and semi-automatic welding. of special shape and design, such as tube electrodes filled with powder flux, help to raise labor efficiency and facilitate arc excitation while welding in difficult conditions. The electric hephaestus and its follow-up equipment and processes were licensed in the United States of America, Britain, France, Germany, Belgium, Sweden, Italy, Norway, Denmark, Spain, Switzerland. Dozens of plants in those countries began to open and successfully operate welding stations and even large workshops, which applied the Bernadotte's method and sometimes received direct assistance and advice from the inventor himself. There appeared first textbooks and manuals on electric welding, which were based entirely on the theory and experience developed by Nikolai Bernadas. His inventions were displayed in special halls at various technical exhibitions. He was awarded the gold medal of the Russian Technical Society for the successful application of the electric arc. Along with the inventor of radio Popov and electric lamp Ladikin, Nikolai Bernadas received the diploma of the honored electrical engineer. In his articles and reports, the well-known German physicist Ruhlmann underlined that the invention by Nikolai Bernadas shall go down in the history of engineering on par with the invention of the steam engine telegraph, telephone, electric lighting, and transmission of electric energy at long distances. Leading technical journals devoted dozens of articles to Nikolai Bernadotte. Like the Yablushka's Russian Lake, the Russian Ark by Petrov and Bernadotte excited the whole world. World renown was soon gained by another Russian engineer, Slavyanov who successfully experimented with replacing coal electrodes by metallic ones. In the meantime, Nikolai Bernadas continued to invent. He kept working on cupola electric surfacing. He picked up Slavana's ideas and designed several original devices with consumable electrodes. Nikolai Bernadas also solved the problem of welding and shielding gas fuel. He mechanized many welding processes. And employed magnetic field for guiding the movement of the arc and the weld liquid metal. With the use of welding methods, Nikolai Bernadotte obtained super strong pore summer. It was an invention that was well in advance of the development of technical thought. This is the inventor's personal seal. Experts think that today this welded structure can be made only through the use of plasmic or electronic beam welding. And still, Nikolai Bernadotte did it with a plain ordinary coal electrode. Inspired by his success, the inventor decided to implement his old dream. With the help of electric welding, he wanted to restore the Russian national relic, the giant czar bell, and to hear how it did sound. For many years, he kept this plan in mind and carried out numerous experiments. The elaborate project included the whole complex of restoration work from the transportation of the bell, 
its hoisting by hydraulic jacks, and the construction of a grandiose czar belfry. The welding itself was to be carried out in a specially built heating furnace. The Tsarist government merely disregarded this talented idea. It was the end of more than the old dream in the inventor's life. Nikolai Bernados went broke again after investing all his property into experiments without getting any financial support from anywhere. In Tsarist Russia, with its landlordish atmosphere of stagnation, the Electric Sophista Society had no chances for survival and fell to pieces. The next to sink down was the Russian Society for the Electrical Processing of Metals. In the prime of renown and with no means of living whatsoever, many great Russian inventors had to live through the same, almost ritual trial as Nikolai Bernados. The Bernados family was forced to move to the countryside and settle down in the town of Pastas. Nikolai Bernados opened a welding workshop at the Grand Boiler Factory and started to work on new designs, more advanced than before. He was full of ideas again. But they all were destined to be only sketches, with no opportunity to be put to life. Heaps of letters. Piles of them were sent from Pastor to the Russian Technical Society, to officials in Tsarist departments, and every letter begged for support in the name of Russia for the flourishment of the Russian industry, for the good of the people of Russia. But the Tsarist government couldn't care less about the welding in 1905, the year of the first Russian Revolution. In poor health, exhausted by years of selfless work, Nikolai Bernadotte passed away, leaving these prophetic words for the future generations. The invention, based on the most intensive source of heat, will broaden up human possibilities and speed up the solution of social problems of the contemporary society. Nikolai Bernadotte was a dreamer and idealist. But the new times have turned his ideals into a wonderful reality. Soviet scientists, engineers, and working men have realized the most daring dreams of Bernadas and Slavana. The true center of welding in the world is now the Institute of Electric Welding under the Ukrainian Academy of Sciences. It bears the name of the outstanding follower of the first Russian welding expert, Yevgeny Askarovich Paton. The reality today are age-long dreams of lonely enthusiasts who wish to conquer the forces of metal and replace strenuous manual labor. Every world today and tomorrow will remind us of the heart and thoughts of Nikolai Nikolaevich Bernadotte, the man who stood at the roots of welding. Script by Alexander Kernienko, candidate of technical sciences, science advisor Danila Dutkov. Academician of the Ukraine's Academy of Sciences. Director, Grigory Isetnik. Camera, Michael Kowalczyk. Ukrainian TV Film Studios. Filmed at request by Paton Institute of Electric Welding under the Ukrainian Academy of Sciences.